and I, I like to tell people that if you really want to understand Sengis, you need to kind of think of them as a cross between a miniature anteater, long nose, long sticky tongue, they're eating ants and termites, a miniature antelope, because they've got long legs, big eyes, and they run like the wind. Uh, they're very, very fast. And then they've got a, a mouse-like tail. So it's a com combination critter. And they're even more extreme in terms of their life history. Um, most small mammals have very altricial young. They're born naked, they're little pinky things, and it takes weeks for them, their eyes to open up. Elephant shrews have precocial young. They're like antelopes. Within an hour, the young are <coughs> fully furred, and they're running like adults. Their litter size is like an antelope, between one and three, very low litter sizes. Um, unusually, for mammals especially, only about 5% of all mammal species are monogamous, and all elephant shrews so far studied are monogamous. Pretty unusual, pretty extreme. Um, but it's not the kind of monogamy that we all like to believe in. Uh, although the pair live on, on a common area, they spend very little time together. They're kind of independent cohabitants of, of their territory. No, that's pretty much how I envision them. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I don't like to bring it up, but most people are that way also. Um, and. They're, I guess you could call them serial monogamous because the pair will stay together as long as one is alive. If one dies, then they'll repair. And humans do kind of the same thing. We're serial monogamous. And even, even if a, a mate die, uh, doesn't die but walks off, you know, you pair up again. So, in fact, there, there's some similarities. What's the advantage of that? Well, th that's kind of what I, I, I have been interested in. And monogamy, uh, it's thought, had a couple of. of reasons why it's evolved. Uh, one is that if, if you're monogamous, you're able to raise young successfully. If you're not, you can. So let's take humans, for example. You, you have a, a baby that, that's dependent on, on the parents for what, 15 years, maybe. Now, if you don't have two parents, it's likely that baby isn't going to make it. Now, things have changed. I mean, there are a lot of single parents now. But you go back you know, 20,000 years. That probably wasn't the case. It took two to, to successfully reproduce. And that's really strong uh, evolutionary pressure to be monogamous. Here, it's a little bit different. Uh, the young are born totally precocial. The male has nothing to do with raising the young. The female has little to do with it, except nursing it for about two weeks, and only nursing it once a day. So what's going on here? Well, all elephant shrews are thin on the ground. They're not very dense. They're widely spaced. And so what's the male to do? He has two, to simplify, he has two strategies. You can run around hoping to catch a female in estrus and mate with her. Or you can hang on to one female and make sure you're there when she comes into estrus. Mm -hmm. And the theory is, is that with elephant shrews, uh, what's driving it is male mate guarding. The male gets a female, and he guards her against all other males. Thus, you're monogamous.